In this video, I want to show you five incredibly handy and powerful Lightroom features that are honestly quite hidden away and therefore very often left unused. However, these are some essential Lightroom skills that can help you work faster, smarter, and more importantly, more accurately. Also, by the end of the video, I want to show you what I think is one of the best organizational features that Lightroom has to offer. And this one really helped me to improve my editing workflow. All right, so this first feature that I want to show you, I'm sure is being looked over by a lot of you. And for the longest time, I also didn't take notice of it. But once you know about it, I'm sure you will love it. It's called the Target Adjustment Tool and you can find it in the Tone Curve panel, in the HSL Color panel, and in the Black and White panel. When you open one of these panels, you can see a small icon in the top left of the panel. And with this tool, you can select a specific color or tone in your image and then adjust it separately from the rest of your image. So it's very handy if you want to, for example, change the hue or luminance or saturation of a specific element in your image. In this image, for example, I'd like to change the saturation of these clouds. So I'll open the HSL panel and you can switch between color or HSL simply by clicking on the word. And these panels basically do the same thing, but they're just laid out a bit differently. So the color panel groups the hue, saturation, and luminance adjustments for a specific color, whereas the HSL panel groups all the colors for a specific adjustment. And the target adjustment tool is only available in the HSL panel and not in the color panel. So once in the HSL panel, I will select saturation because that's what I want to change for this photo. And then you can click the target adjustment icon here and hover over the color you want to adjust. So in this example, it's the orange clouds right here. And then when I click and drag down, the saturation of this color will decrease. And if I drag up, the saturation will increase. And you'll see that in the HSL panel, not just one, but all the sliders that make up this color will move as I drag the mouse. So in this case, the orange and the yellow slider. Also note that all the similar colors in the entire image are being adjusted. So not just the orange in the clouds. So this is still a global adjustment. Now you could essentially achieve the same thing if you move the sliders separately yourself. However, I think using the target adjustment tool is just a lot faster, easier, and more accurate. And the same principle works for the tone curve panel. So let's say I want to darken or lighten certain tonal areas of an image. So for example, these trees here, I'll just make sure that I have the point curve selected here, and then I can activate the target adjustment tool by clicking on the icon in the top left corner. And then I can hover above the area I want to adjust and drag up to lighten or drag down to darken. And you can see a point is automatically being added to the curve and the curve is being adjusted as I drag up or down. So you can do the same Thing for the blue channel. So I'll just select the blue channel here and activate the target adjustment tool. And let's say I want to add a bit more blue tone to these darker areas of the image. So I'll just hover over this area and then click and drag up and that will add more blue tone in that shadow area. And by dragging down, I'll add more yellow tone in that same area. So this is a super handy tool to make very accurate color and tonal adjustments. Now this next feature is a little bit less hidden, but for some reason I never even considered using it. And I'm sure a lot of you probably also haven't used this yet. It's called the snapshot feature and you can find it right here on the left. And it's super easy to keep track of different versions or different edits you make of a photo. A snapshot basically saves all the adjustments you've done to a photo in a very easy to find record. So you don't have to go look through the history panel if you want to revert back to a previous version of a photo. So it's really easy to remember or to save different versions that you've created of the same photo. For example, you might want to make both a color and a black and white version of the same photo. So you could then start by developing the photo in color like I've already done right here and then make a snapshot by hitting command or control N. And I'll name this one color. Then I can convert the photo to black and white and make my adjustments for a black and white edit. And when I'm finished, I can make another snapshot again, simply by hitting command or control N and I will name this one black and white. I can then click on the appropriate snapshots to switch between the two versions. And I could of course make as many versions as I want and they will all be saved here in the snapshots. A few updates ago, Lightroom added this next little feature which makes it a lot easier to set your black and white points for a photo. And the reason you want to set your black and white points for a photo is to get the highest dynamic range from an image without causing any clipping. In this photo, for example, we can see by looking at the histogram that the tones of this photo are primarily in the center range. So there's still room 
important to extend the tonal range or dynamic range by adjusting the blacks and the whites. And before Lightroom had this little trick that I'm about to show you, the way you would do this is by looking at the histogram and then moving the black and white sliders. And you could turn on the clipping warning feature by hitting J and then by adjusting the white and black sliders in Lightroom, we can expand the tonal range into the areas at either end of the histogram. The thing with this technique is that you have to pay attention to the histogram while you're moving the sliders or you have to pay attention to the clipping warning. So let me show you a much easier way to do this rather than dragging the sliders. Simply hold the shift key and then double click the word whites on the left of the slider and Lightroom will automatically set the white point for you. Same goes for the black point so simply hold the shift key and then double click the word blacks at the left of the slider and Lightroom will automatically set the black point for you. And if I hit J, so activating the clipping warning, you'll notice that Lightroom doesn't clip any highlights, but it does allow some blacks to get clipped. So this will work for the vast majority of your photos, but just keep in mind that with any automatic editing, you'll have to do some manual adjustments to get the best results. And this shift double click technique also works with other basic panel sliders. So if I hold shift and then double click the word exposure, Lightroom will calculate what it thinks is the accurate exposure for this image. So it's just auto adjusting these settings to what it thinks is the most correct setting. And I think it's most useful with the blacks and the white slider because it's the fastest and easiest way to find the white and the black point of your photo. Do make sure that you double click the words and not the slider itself. And if the slider stays at zero, then it means that Lightroom thinks that that is the best setting. And speaking of sliders, they can sometimes feel a little bit too sensitive, especially if you're trying to do very subtle tweaks to your photos. So instead of fiddling around with these sliders, trying to find the exact value you're looking for, I'll show you some really cool features you can use to adjust the sliders in Lightroom. So when you hover your mouse over a specific slider, you can see that it lights up and the number field behind the slider turns gray. So if I now hit the up or down arrow key, the slider moves up or down by a value of five each time. And if I hold Alt or Option and hit the up or down arrow key, the slider moves up or down by a value of one each time. And if I hold shift and hit the up or down arrow key, the slider moves up or down by a value of 20 each time. And this works for all the sliders in all the different adjustment panels. So it's a really easy and quick way to change the sliders without having to drag them. However, let's say you still want to drag the sliders, but you just want to have a bit more control and more finesse when moving the sliders. To do this, just grab the left side edge of the adjustment panels and expand it. And you can see this will automatically also expand the sliders, making it easier to make little adjustments. And Lightroom will also remember the width of the panel the next time you open it. So if you close and reopen Lightroom, you don't have to expand the panel every time. This next feature is probably one of my favorites. And I actually almost forgot to add it to the list simply because ever since I heard about it, I just have it enabled all the time without thinking about it. However, I think that a lot of people are still not using this incredible little feature. So whenever you're working on a photo and you know you start in the basics panel and then you make some adjustments in the tone curve panel and then you add some sharpening in the detail panel and then you go back to the color panel and then scroll all the way down to do some calibration adjustments and you can see that the adjustments panel just becomes very cluttered and you end up having to do a lot of scrolling to go from one panel to the other. Luckily, Lightroom has a very handy organizational feature that will automatically keep only one panel open at a time. So as you open one panel, the previous panel will automatically collapse. And to turn it on, just right click on any dark gray area in the side panel. You'll see a pop-up menu show up and solo mode will be one of the options you can select. So just click it to turn it on. So now you'll see that when I have the tone curve panel open and then I open the color panel, Lightroom will automatically collapse the tone curve panel. And the same happens if I now go into the detail panel, it will automatically collapse the color panel. So it just keeps the entire adjustments panel a lot more clear and organized for a faster workflow. And another really important skill that will improve your Lightroom editing workflow is to get familiar with keyboard shortcuts. So go check out this video next and learn these 10 essential Lightroom shortcuts.